Welcome to the Get Fit Guy's quick and dirty tips to get moving and shape up. My name is Brock Armstrong and I'm the Get Fit Guy. Research has shown that simply being exposed to the elements of the great outdoors can lower our levels of stress and lower our pulse rates and even lower our blood pressure. But what happens when we exercise in green space? That's where something called green exercise comes in, and that's what I want to talk about today. I was at the beach the other day with some friends, and after a rousing game of what I'd like to call apprehend the frisbee before it nails some poor unsuspecting stranger, we all settled down into the sand and had a little chat and observed our fellow beachgoers. Now, being that I'm such a movement and fitness nerd, and I also happen to be at the beach with a biomechanist, well, I started doing a mental tally of how many people were either frolicking, i.e. moving their bodies, or napping, i.e. recovering their bodies. And it was basically a 70-30 split in favor of frolicking, and of those 70% of frolickers, Easily 99% of them were smiling and laughing and completely unaware of their current rating of perceived exertion. I told you I'm a nerd. But observing this got me wondering about the direct or indirect effect of simply being outdoors, in the sunshine, flanked by trees on one side and the ocean on the other with mountains off in the distance, and how much happier these folks appeared when I compared them to the determined and somewhat dour in contrast faces that I'd seen earlier at the gym. Not only did this setting make me grateful to live where I do, but it also inspired me to dig into some research on how green spaces and exercise can have a synergistic effect on us humans. Our hunter-gatherer ancestors coexisted with this natural outdoor environment for, well, tens of thousands of years, and it is hypothesized that this provides us present-day humans with our innate desire to be in and around nature. And you know what? You don't even have to get in the Wayback Machine to see this. All we really need to do is leave the city or perhaps fly to a part of the world where being outside is the default rather than the exception to see this in action. A number of the papers and studies I came across during my research said that in addition to satisfying this primal instinct, nature also provides an environment that does not require our direct attention. I mean, a tree doesn't have any push notifications. Giving the great outdoors some wonderful restoration properties that encourage our recovery from mental fatigue and attention restoration. Although in urban settings, fewer and fewer people are getting involved in the natural environment on a daily basis, well, many people do seek out green spaces and get involved in outdoor activities. Currently, there's an increasing trend of fit folks signing up for outdoor endurance challenges like obstacle course races, cross-country and trail runs, and mountain bike events. But paradoxically, there's an even greater number of sedentary folks who are simply getting insufficient physical activity to meet even our meager current health guidelines. And that brings me to green exercise. Recent reviews indicate that getting out and exercising outdoors appears to be a lot more beneficial to mental health over the same indoor activities, and natural environments have a greater impact on psychological health, especially when there's an element of play and having fun involved. So much so that a term, green exercise, was adopted to describe the health benefit that happens when we exercise in nature. Now, this term was adopted in 2003 and then published through peer review in 2005. And in that 2005 paper, five groups of 20 participants were shown a sequence of 30 scenes projected on a wall while they exercised on a treadmill. And I know this sounds kind of ridiculous and boring, but please hang in there. The findings are cool. Four categories of scenes were shown to the treadmill-bound participants. Rural pleasant, rural unpleasant, urban pleasant, and urban unpleasant. There was also a control group who was running on a treadmill while staring at a blank wall. No rural or urban photos for them. For the test, blood pressure and the psychological measures of self-esteem and mood were measured before and after the intervention. 
and in the end, there was a clear effect of both exercise and the different scenes on the participants' blood pressure, self-esteem, and mood. And this is how it broke down. Exercise alone significantly reduced blood pressure. It increased self-esteem and had a positive, significant effect on mood measures. So chalk one up for exercise. Now, the pleasant rural and urban scenes produced a significantly greater positive effect on self-esteem than the exercise group alone, showing that there's a synergistic effect of green exercise in both rural and urban environments. But, by contrast, unpleasant rural and urban scenes reduced the positive effects of exercise on self-esteem. And finally, the unpleasant rural scenes had the most dramatic effect, depressing both beneficial effects of exercise on three different measures of mood. Now, the researchers interpreted that final result as being threats to the countryside have a greater negative effect on mood than areas that were already urban and already unpleasant. Now, this led the researchers to conclude that, and I quote, green exercise has both important public and environmental health consequences. According to the 2010 census from the U.S. Census Bureau, 80.7% of the U.S. population lives in urban areas. This is an increase from 79% back in 2000. Now, similarly, in the UK, more than 80% of people live in urban areas as of 2004, though there has been a greater growth in rural areas in the past few years. Now, urban settings, simply by definition, have less nature than rural ones, although many large cities are making greater efforts to include more green space. But still, according to research and anecdotal evidence alike, less green space means we may have reduced mental well-being and less opportunity to recover from mental stresses. The World Health Organization estimates that depression and depression-related illness is poised to be the greatest cause of ill health by the year 2020. Now, this is due in part to some other unhealthy behaviors, such as smoking, overeating, and alcohol consumption, which they believe are coping mechanisms for both mental ill health and general stress, but also come with their own unhealthy consequences. A study called The Physical and Mental Health Benefits of Green Exercise was done to explore the synergy between adopting physical activities while also being directly exposed to nature. And in that study, they found that both physical activity and nature can positively affect physical and psychological well-being. Now, the researchers broke nature exposure into three levels of engagement, with increasing benefits at each level. And those levels are, number one, viewing nature, like through a window or looking at a painting. Number two, being in the presence of nearby nature, which may be incidental to some other activity, like walking or cycling to work or reading in a garden seat or talking to your friends in a park. And number three is active participation and involvement with nature, such as gardening, farming, trekking, camping, cross-country running, or even horseback riding. That study concluded that there is evidence that indicates nature can make positive contributions to our health, and it can also help us recover from pre-existing stresses and problems. Now, the coolest part, in my opinion, is that exposure to nature can have an immunizing effect that will then protect us from future stresses and can help us concentrate and think more clearly. And nature can also help with chronic pain. In a different type of study called Patients' Perceptions of Green Exercise in Settings of Chronic Pain, they found that 47% of people between the ages of 50 and 70 years had some type of chronic pain. And of those respondents, the most frequent pain complaint was back pain, which was 65% of them. But 95% of those participants reported that nature improved their mood and reduced their chronic pain symptoms. Now, there was a hurdle in this study, though, a hurdle that likely faces many of us city dwellers. 
and that is that only 75% of the study participants reported that green spaces were easily accessible to them on a regular basis. Now that leaves 25% of them in need of some alternative treatment. For those of you who think you can only get serious fitness results from working out in a formal gym setting, well, there was a study that looked at the effective outcomes during and after high-intensity exercise in outdoor green and indoor gym settings. And this study compared the psychological effects of high-intensity exercise in outdoor green and indoor gym settings in 22 adult runners using a randomized repeated measure design. Affect and perceived exertion were both assessed before, during, and after a 6,000 meter run, where the runners were told to run the second half of the distance at their maximum effort. Now, after doing that same run outside and again in the gym, the physiological outcomes did not differ at any time between the settings. Now, this study suggests that runners experience the same positive affective responses to high-intensity exercise in both a natural environment and an indoor environment. Now, I probably don't have to make you do this test on yourself to find out which setting you would enjoy more, now do I? Now, this all sounds great so far, right? But there is a problem, and that is the general decline in physical activity worldwide is resulting in a huge increase in physical disability, disease, and a rising number of cases of mental ill health. So it is essential that we find ways to encourage everyone to get more movement into their lives on a daily basis. Now, this idea is certainly not new. For 99% of our existence on this planet, not only have we lived off the land and relied on nature for our basic survival and health, but we have also used it for pleasure and for fun. More recently, rock climbers, hikers, mountain bikers, and endurance athletes of all types have used the great outdoors and green spaces for their chosen sport. They have found that being outside not only increases their enjoyment, but it also improves their adherence to a fitness program. And now we are finding that it also may encourage positive physical activity behaviors which are likely to produce greater health gains. Now, one hypothesis is that we humans are born with an emotional connection to other living organisms, which means that part of our genetic makeup is innately predisposed to desire contact with nature. Now, this would explain why green exercise is so effective at facilitating physical activity that also improves health. Because, well, as we found out, it can increase physical activity levels with lower perceived exertion, it can reduce your stress, it can remove mental fatigue, and it can also improve mood and self-esteem. So if there's a quick and dirty tip in here somewhere, it is that exercise within green spaces and the great outdoors has the potential to help us address health challenges that are facing us city dwellers, and it should not be looked at as just a playground for those who seek the thrills of extreme sports, but rather as a location that can be visited by all of us. I, for one, hope that by encouraging more and more fit folks to get out there and enjoy some green exercise, or even simply the great outdoors, well, city planners and the people who live there will continue that evolutionary connection with nature and also take steps to not only maintain it, but fight to increase it too. All right, don't forget for more green info, outdoor tips, and to join in the wilderness conversation, you can head over to facebook.com slash getfitguy or twitter.com slash getfitguy or getfitguy.quickanddirtytips.com where we have a brand new website for you and you can find all the transcripts to all the podcasts and also my blog posts over there. So check it out, getfitguy.quickanddirtytips.com. Now, my name is Brock Armstrong and I'm the Get Fit Guy asking you, what are you waiting for? Go outside and get fit. <laughs>